Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 61. 61. Bronny? Justin Braun. There you go. Single tier. A lot of people yeah. want him back. I don't blame him. He's uh, solid. Sure. Is what it is. Anyway, <laughs> this week we'll be talking about the weekend review, obviously, on top of uh, such topics as special teams and the horrible five-on-five -five play that we see from the Sharks. Yep. Well, we're going to do a versus showdown to be exciting. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a look at the week ahead of the games that they have coming up, and we'll also do a review of our fantasy hockey leagues and EASHL teams. Sounds good. Ready to start the show? Ready. You know, we had a complaint though during the live that the the light is shining too much off your head, and oh my God, it's really bright. Oh geez, it's going nuclear. Be careful not to burn my head. I, I can't out. see anymore. Okay, anyway, um, done with that. So uh, we can review. Uh, first game this week against the Buffalo Sabers. This was the uh, rematch game, if you will, because mm -hmm. we played them at home. It was uh, a loss, but close, I would say, still. And this game kind of mirrored that, I would think, right? So uh, a four-three overtime loss. Uh, San Jose Sharks pick up a point. The entire game, uh, they looked like they were in it. They looked like they could have won it, kind of like the first game. So uh, one of those games that, you know, it's a heartbreaker because you mm -hmm. know they could have done better. They could have came home with two points, but they do pick up one. I feel like uh, watching this game was like, oh, they're, they're in control. They're angry. They're going to win. They're going to put it all together. Mm -hmm. And they're looking solid. Then they let in that one goal right at the end of the second period. Mm -hmm. And then third period, you know, it looked like they were on their heels, which they kind of were. Right. And then... Uh, then the overtime. We'll, we'll get into the overtime later, but there's a good quote from Logan about uh, <laughs> the non-line change, I guess you could call it. I don't yeah. Know you want to call it. Yeah, well, the eventual line change. Right. Put it that way. Anyway, yeah. so the game after that, we play Montreal. Montreal and look good. I thought Aaron Dell looked pretty decent, and I go, okay, here, here comes everyone. All the you know people are going to be talking about <laughs> replacing Aaron Dell or replacing Jones with, right. with Aaron Dell. And no one did, of course. Right, yeah. Never see that online or anything. Going with that theme, we'll be talking about that later as well. Right. So uh, anything really stand out to you during the Montreal game? Uh, it's a good bounce back game after mm -hmm. what just happened in Buffalo, so I'm glad that they got a full two points. Okay. Um, there's goes to show you how good Carey Price is. He played pretty well, but the Sharks were just... I don't know. I don't even want to say luckier, but they, mm -hmm. they had their bounces go their way, and right. um, I thought they played pretty well. So good to win in Montreal. It's not an easy building to win. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The uh, the crowd, the media, everything mm -hmm. goes along with it. Speaking of the media, <laughs> next game is in Toronto. Do you have something else you want to say? The there? next day, no. I'm just okay. there's there's a picture uh, that the Sharks posted. I actually think it was in Toronto. It wasn't in Montreal okay. of the media scrum, basically. Yeah, and it was surrounding. I think that one was Patrick Marlowe. Marlo. Like you couldn't even see him. Like, yeah, it was just so many reports. <laughs> in fact, we'll throw it up right here. I'll just oh, there you go. The he's, he's a rock star. Right. Still. right. Yeah. yeah, it's very very cool. So uh, yeah, they go to Toronto. Um, it's a four one loss, but it re the game really wasn't that bad. So nah. it was two to one going like late into the third. Right. right. They pull Martin Jones. And a goal gets scored empty net, so mm -hmm. then it's 3-1. They put him back in there. Everyone kind of just checks out, and they put a fourth goal in. Realistically, that game was a 2-1 game pretty much the entire game, right? They, they, they played well. Uh, it was a good battle back and forth. It didn't look as bad as the score would indicate. So it's a tough loss to take. You don't get any points out of it, but, you know, they didn't play super horrible in that game. Right. I thought they were going to come back and tie it another yeah. game, kind of like, uh, I think, the game last week. But... Uh, the Sharks were down 2-1, to one. they scored an empty netter, and then Jones goes back in net, and with like maybe 30 seconds left, they scored one on him again to make it 4-1. to one. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of misleading. You look at the score and you go, oh, the Sharks lost, they got killed. But that wasn't really how it happened. Right. So uh, I thought, again, I feel like the Sharks are playing better. They're getting better mostly every game. Maybe not improving every game, but right. they're trending in the right direction. They just need to put it a little together more consistently to get those wins. And, man, Buffalo definitely should have been two points. Toronto could have been two points. And then we get to tonight's game, right. which was against Ottawa. And they just... I don't want to say they looked bad. I didn't think they looked bad. Yeah. I, if you look at some of the Ottawa goals, they were just lucky bounces kind of, <laughs> right? 
Right. No, they're okay. So one of the goals, I think it was the first goal, um, was a pass from the right right wing boards, and it like skips like a stone on a pond, mm-hmm. and it goes over Couture's stick. It lands perfectly on whoever's stick from Ottawa, and he bangs it in. Yeah. And um, yeah, maybe Dell could have had that one, but it was just one of those ones where it got it found its way to the slot. I right? don't even think he could have gotten that one because it was such a bang bang play. Sure. The guy kind of like golfed it and put it right into the corner, right. pretty close too. So he was right in the slot. I don't yeah. think. I wouldn't fault him too much for that one. Oh yeah, I don't think I would fault him. I think you know if he's if he's going across and he's just getting to the middle of the of the net, yeah. as opposed to going post to post. Right. Right. So a yeah. post to post, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I think this one he probably could have got it, but I don't think I would fault him either, really. But again, just a really weird play, a, a, a weird bounce. Um, then they had the other weird bounce um, that they had in the the Ottawa game as well. That one was uh, which one? <laughs> there was a couple. There's the one that went off his blocker. The, the blocker, yes, yes, yeah. yeah. That was uh, that was the third goal, I believe, or fourth goal. I shouldn't even call that a weird bounce. Let's call it this way. So uh, it goes off his blocker, and usually what you'll see is, and in practices too, they'll fire a shot and it'll, it'll uh, go off the blocker, and they're intentionally punching it in the corner. Well, when they're doing that, the shot's coming from straight ahead, and they're punching it in the corner. When he made the save, he was on the the left post. So when he punched it out with his blocker, he put it right back into the front, like it's right just, in the crease. It's rebound control. Yeah, it's, it's, it's poor rebound. Control. It really is. And but. and this is a difference between a great regular starting goaltender versus a backup goaltender. And I'm not trying to just pour on Dell here, um, but that is just. A little example right there of just a simple mental mistake of yeah. where you're putting that puck, right? You, instead of hitting it more this way, you kind of hit it head on, right. and you put it right into the slot, right on the guy's stick. But we'll talk more about that later. Right. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so don't want to give you everything up front here. Uh, so yeah, and then uh, the the declare goal was just a really good goal. He torched... Uh, Absolutely Brendan torched Dillon. Brendan Dillon. Uh, so Dillon, instead of skating a little bit farther back, skates a little bit more to the side, and that gives uh, Duclair a little bit uh, of a jump on him, and he burns him around there. Just a really good goal. I'm not even mad on that one. Uh, by that time, Dell had been pulled. Jones came in. So uh, just a really nice play by Duclair there is really all that one comes comes down to. So yep. there was the other goal um, that... Carlson got his pocket picked, and they go back the other way. Mm-hmm. And uh, Carlson picks up the guy coming up the middle. I believe it was to check, and I don't know who it was on the left wing. But one of the things I saw that was kind of weird was LeBanc was chasing him from behind, and then Vlasic kind of pulls over. And we looked at this play, and I kind of said, yeah. you know, I don't understand why LeBanc is still chasing on his heels. Why doesn't he kind of pull off? Once you see Vlasic come over, wouldn't LeBanc scoot back over more towards the middle? Uh, instead of essentially being behind a player who's already guarded by somebody else, it just didn't make sense to me. Kind of like he should have been collapsing on the net. Kind of, yeah. Towards the net. And it's funny because you see you see that player who eventually ends up putting the puck in the net. I think it was to Chuck again. Yeah. Um, uh, he just outworked Carlson, uh, got a stick up and put the puck in. LeBanc maybe could have gotten in between that and disrupted that pass, but even then, behind the play, there was a trailer. If that puck gets deflected out, that trailer could potentially pick it up. So again, LeBanc kind of in no man's land. Uh, I, I'm not a defensive specialist, but just from my eyes and what I see, that seems to be the place that maybe he should have been. I'm not blaming that goal on him. I'm not blaming the goal on anybody really. I mean, really, it's a it's a it's a tap in goal. It was a really nice goal, and, I just, and he worked for it. Carlson was a little soft in the stick. Yeah. I think Carlson needs to be a little bit stronger, and that's not you know an, an argument from my side. I think sure. a lot of people echo that yeah. statement. So. Uh, Carlson needs to be a little bit better defensively on a stick like that, yeah. and that wouldn't have been a goal. But yeah. it is what it is, and the Sharks, another regulation loss to Ottawa in Ottawa, just like last year. Well, last year was 6-2, to two. Uh-huh. so today it was 5-5. Five five. Five. doesn't matter. We're talking about improvements here. Right. right? Yeah, okay. okay. So next year we 4-2. to two. <laughs> Yeah, next year we have 4-2 <laughs> loss. Speaking of improvements, again, uh, let's look at the PK. The PK is sure. absolutely phenomenal. First in the league, 93 point what percent? Two? Uh, two. Some ridiculous. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, 93.2 percent on the PK. Uh, they are doing phenomenal right now. Now, it's a small sample size still. We're only 12 games in. And, yes, we expect that that's going to kind of dip right back down. Um Last year, I think Tampa Bay was first in the league in uh, penalty kill percentage at eighty-five percent. So you can imagine that this is going to come down, maybe not like as close to eighty-five, or maybe maybe at eighty-five. But they're overachieving right now on the PK. It's right? probably going to be like we're going to do a week in review and be like, <laughs> man, the PK was awful this week, and then it's going to regress it right back down. There you it go. won't take much to because to, <laughs> it's such a small sample size that one bad week is going to drop you down. 
And, you know, it's funny because we talked during the live about, you know, the five on five play, which we'll get to in a second here. But the the PK being so good and, you know, mm. why is it that we're not so great on the PK or on, on five on five? Well, uh, during the penalty kill, you're so focused on playing defense and they're doing such a great job on the five on five. Maybe not so much. They're more worried about the offensive side of it. So, uh, you know, it just goes to show with this team when they do focus on playing defense, they are more than capable of keeping the puck to the outside, clearing those extra rebounds. Uh, doing all the right things to protect your net, protect your house, protect your goaltender, right? So they're able to do all those things uh, a man down. Like, why wouldn't you be able to do it five on five, right? Well, so, you're, you play a little more conservative when you're right. on the penalty kill. You're not taking as many chances. You're not breaking out of the zone usually unless you're mm -hmm. losing and trying to get that shorthanded goal. So it makes sense that they are they are a good defensive team mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to when they want to be defensive, I guess. Yeah. So they could, I mean, imagine the Sharks just flip a switch and be like, you know what, we're going to bunker in and just play defense and try and squeak out one nothing, 2-1 <laughs> wins, right? Like, it's, it, they're not built for that. Right. So it's great that the penalty kill is that is doing so well. It's also kind of a carryover from last year because last year I think they ended up in sixth place if that was right i can't remember or uh, no the power play was six power place, play actually six. yeah penalty we'll, kill, i think it was a little bit further down that will be the next topic here is there anything uh, else you nine. want to say about the pk or do you <laughs> want to just jump oh uh, let's just jump right in the power We're play. jumping baby okay yeah. so last last season sixth place on uh with the power play was 23.8 percent i believe something like that yeah 23.6 uh sorry 23.6 yes. last year this year slight improvement 23.8 there you go <laughs> 0.2% better. Now, it's, again, small sample size. The right. funny thing is, last season, 6th place with that number. 0.2% difference, right? 6th place. This season, 11th. What does that tell you? Maybe there's some che some teams that are overachieving on the power play right now, and they're going to regress, just like we're kind of saying with the PK. We'll probably drop down a bit. Mm -hmm. Some of these other teams that are playing really, really well on the power play are probably going to drop down a bit. I, I think the Sharks are probably going to stay around that. I mean, that's where they finished last year. Mm -hmm. I think the power play looks fantastic. Uh, it did not, what, the first week, first two weeks? Yeah. It just did not, wasn't clicking, wasn't doing well. Now it's kind of carrying the team in a way but that's, like, eh, a little too much. Yeah. They need to start scoring <laughs> five on five. Right. Um, I mean, Evander Kane has seven goals on the year and six of them are on the power play. Yeah. That's crazy. So and he, I don't even mind that so much, but I would like to see, like, ten goals. With six of them on the power, right. on the power play, right? Yeah. You get a little a, bit a more five-on-five five generation yes. going there. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't want to rely too much on the power play to score your goals. Otherwise, what if you get one penalty a game, right? Or a power play, I mean. Yeah. Uh, so you're just, you can't rely on it to win. Um, and I don't like that. I, I especially don't like that when you go into playoffs. And I know we're in October. But <laughs> going to playoffs and your team relies on the power play, there's so many less penalties that are called in the playoffs that right. you don't want to be that team that needs a play a power play goal yeah you you definitely want to be a team that does well five on five if you mm -hmm. my philosophy is if you can do well five on five there's no reason you can't do well five on four although again sharks pk is kind of showing that that may not be the case because teams that are running into them are having a hard time scoring with the power play but they're lighting them up five on five take tonight's game for example against ottawa right five game i'm sorry five goals all five of which were five on five goals and they had power play chances they had a couple five on threes, if I recall, mm -hmm. right? Um, the Sharks just did a, a marvelous job on the PK. Yep, special teams are not the problem. There you go. So <laughs> the problem being five on five. So what what is it that you want to highlight about their five on five play that maybe needs to be uh, looked at again, or or what's what's your assessment? Um, maybe play a little bit more conservatively. Okay. Maybe what I what I see or what I don't see from them mm -hmm. and I see from other teams um, I mean we were just watching the highlights we were talking about this for the game tonight the Ottawa game um, you see a scramble in front of the net and you see two three defenders on the other team trying to stop that puck from going in. In fact they had one they stopped it on the line right tonight um, a yeah. defender not the goalie yeah. reached back and pulled the puck out and didn't cover and if he covers it that's an automatic penalty shot but um when the sharks scramble in front of the net, they kind of like maybe go down on their knee. They don't. You don't see them other than burns on breakaways. You don't see them laying on the <laughs> ice, right? They're not scrambling and, and doing what they can to get the puck out. They're just kind of. It's almost like they're they're one skate in the zone and one skate out, waiting for that puck to get out, and they can transition and, right. and get a I don't know an odd man break the other way. So, I I want to see a little bit more team desperation on the team defense, kind of really making it tough for other teams to score on your goalie sell out exactly sell yeah. out um i it, it's also hard to say like you know block more shots because you see more injuries with that too yeah. so 
Uh, I, I'm not saying go full John Tortorella where <laughs> you're having your star players go down on the ice right. and blocking shots at the point. More of, um, I want to see them collapsing more on the goal and playing a little bit more conservatively because when they do that, they're stopping the puck. Yeah. And they're such a good transition team with those guys in the back. Carlson, you saw Burns tonight feed LeBanc on a breakaway pass. Just amazing pass yeah. out of the back. Um, that's where they're dangerous. I think that's what they can make their, their bread and butter, if you will. Yeah, no, I like that. And we talked a little bit about during the live, this high-risk, high-reward style of play that Brent Burns and Eric Carlson bring to the team, right? There are times where you're going to get that pass and it's going to get through and everyone's going to go, man, what amazing vision Brent Burns has, right? What what a heads-up play. What a phenomenal laser pass right on the tape. Everything worked out really well, right? Mm -hmm. And there are times, I mean, if you look at that pass, it went between a, uh, an opposing player's stick and skates. There was a gap between the stick and the skates. <laughs> If a skate is a foot more this way, or the stick is a foot more that way, again, we're talking a game of inches here. Or if the reaction time was a little quicker. Exactly. <laughs> if that puck doesn't make it through that gap, all of a sudden Brent Burns is, is oh, why are you making that pass, man? There's a guy right in front of you. What are you doing, right? So again, this is kind of what we've been talking about with these two players, is that it's, it's a high risk, high reward kind of thing. So sometimes it's gonna work out, sometimes it's not, and that's the risk that you take. But we have to remember these guys are both Norris Trophy winning defensemen. This is the style of game that they play, and it's a style that's been you know, successful for them. So I don't think you're gonna see a change in that anytime soon. What I would like to see though is like what Aaron just talked about. You know, you talked about you wanna see them collapsing down. You wanna see them kind of selling out for their goaltender, right? And we see that during the PK. Uh, Scott Hannon was mm -hmm. on with Brody today and he was, you know, pointing out the PK and saying, look, there's a diamond right here. Look how tight it is. There's constant pressure, right? Uh, something that I haven't seen much from the PK in years past. It feels like we've always been very passive, kind of sitting back, just waving our sticks around in the lanes, but letting them have their space. Right, that wasn't happening tonight mm -hmm. against Ottawa. Uh, even on the five on threes that we had, there was a triangle. The triangle had pretty decent pressure. And when the puck got into the slot area, they were collapsed. So, uh, you know, much better job of protecting. If you could take that mentality and do it five on five instead of only when you're working in the PK, I think you're gonna be a lot more successful in getting the puck back. It's not just about limiting the other team's ability to score, it's about possession. Same thing with three on threes. The mm -hmm. whole point of three on three nowadays is possess the puck, right? Well, that goes for five on five as well. If you have the puck, the other team doesn't. They can't score if they don't have the puck. <laughs> Unless you're Dan Boyle. Sorry, Dan Boyle. Still love you. Oh, um, oh, I know. It's, it hurts me too. Too soon. <laughs> it's, is it really? <laughs> Jeez. Uh, but yeah, so I think that's the idea is what can they do better? Well, I think they just need to take care of their own zone. And I think that's something that we've been saying since last season. So there's really nothing new here. But um, that's that's really five on five play. If you want to make that better, it's not about scoring. It's about possessing. The more you possess, the more you're gonna have the opportunity. And it starts to score. in the back. Start in the yeah. back, and you work your way up. And what okay. better guys to move the puck from the back yeah, exactly. than Eric Carlson and Brent Burns? Yeah. So I don't know. I, I still people are, are asking on uh, was it on Twitter or something? Um, you know, all the uh, the Eric Carlson apologists. Are you guys tired of defending him? Or <laughs> I'm going no. I'm not at all tired of. It. If you just look at the defensive side and, and the blunders, yeah, right. okay, fine. But when you look at, I mean, the he didn't get a point on the goal that happened tonight with Kane, right? Why? Because he took it from his end of the ice all the way through the neutral zone, gliding through, across the blue line, that, walks the blue line, and then yeah. makes a nice little four-foot pass to Couture, who fires it over to Burns, who does a shot pass to Kane, who tips it in. Unfortunately, there's no third assist, because if there was... <laughs> There you go, you right? Yeah, uh, I, he's a big reason why the power play is clicking mm -hmm. like they are. Uh, just having that possession and be able to set up in the zone, you're not dumping and chasing. You have puck possession, like yeah. you were just saying. Uh, I think he had two guys on him when he slipped that pass to Couture, and then Couture recognized that three of the four yeah. penalty killers were right there, and so he whipped it over to Burns, who was open, who then passed it to, or shot, shot passed pass, it yeah. to, uh, to Kane, and he just tipped it in. So uh, just... Carlson is that guy that every team focuses on. And when their focus is on him, other guys are going to be open. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened in this play. And several other plays that maybe didn't lead to a goal, but he is a very dangerous player on the ice. And again, uh, we had a comment, I forgot who it was, and I think it was last week. Why don't you move Carlson to <laughs> the wing, right? Uh, <laughs> kind of like moving Burns to the wing. Right, like, right. If he's such a bad defensive liability, but such so good at offense, why, why not right. change him? Um, doesn't really work. It's not really one-to-one -one like that. That's a whole different reason. Yeah. But uh, you also want your best players on the ice. We say this all the time. 
You want your best players on the ice as most as possible. And Carlson, I think, is is averaging over 25 minutes a game. Same with Burns. So um, those are the two best players, I think, on the Sharks, and they're getting the most ice time. Yeah, I think that's that's very accurate. So Thanks. there you go. <laughs> um, now, we're done with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. We're going to go into the versus showdown. I'm doing my own special effects now. Um, so uh, the versus showdown here is brought to you by our friends at Berticelli's La Villa Gourmet Italian Delicatessen. Uh, they have a phenomenal little shop. Mm -hmm. It has lots of sports memorabilia in there, mostly uh, some shark stuff, sticks, banners, jerseys, all kinds of really cool stuff. And oh yeah, they not, sell food there too. Not just hockey. Yeah. I well, mean, they have NFL. That's they have true. A lot of other stuff too. Sports memorabilia in right. general, if yeah. you like to go visit and take a look. But while you're there, do go ahead and grab some of those uh, meatball sandwiches, the Chris combos. Um, order ahead of time because they, they have you do that. Raviolis, the raviolis. The ravioli. Are, they yeah. make them from scratch there. There you go. Inside. In fact, inside. holidays are coming up. Oh, you're gonna have to get your order. You in. gotta get it Early. In right now, right now. Yeah. So uh, go ahead, uh, give them a call. They're over in uh, Willow Glen, and mm -hmm. they're just uh, really good people. So uh, go in there, tell them the Fin Factor sent you, and uh, enjoy while you're there. Thanks. Very good. Okay, right. so the versus showdown. Who's first? First is going to be Couture versus Pavs in terms of captaincy. Hmm. Uh, there is uh, going back to the game in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. uh, they lost in overtime, and there was a very bad non-line change, a very <laughs> long shift by Kevin LeBanc and Timo Meyer, and I think, believe Carlson was on the ice too, um, but not helping his case. But well, <laughs> well, he got off the ice, and on the and Burns was out there. Oh, that's right. So they made so they a good switched. change, but yeah. the forwards went off, and yeah. So if you go back and watch, you could see the bench yelling at them to get off, and there's a couple instances where they could have made a line change, right. and then they stayed, and so that really pissed off a lot of people. Buffalo scored right then, and so um, obviously that was a big talking point after the game. Yeah. So we have a clip here of Coach Her, uh talking with the press afterwards. Uh, just an inexcusable change. Two guys that stayed out too long, looking for offense. Um, yeah, it's a play or it's a selfish play, and um, that uh, doesn't need to be uh, part of this team. So uh, we'll, we'll figure that out. So this kind of made headlines across the NHL, not just for Sharks. Um, Couture pretty much calling out Timo Meyer without using their names, but you knew who he was talking about. Calling out Timo Meyer and Kevin LeBanc for uh, such a poor line change. I mean, that was just terrible. Yeah. Um, a lot of people on Twitter, a lot of people <laughs> on our, I think even on our comments from last mm -hmm. week, um, some people have posted some stuff about how uh, it's going to create a rift in the locker room and all this stuff. And I think we even went back and forth, right, about it? Yeah, we did. We did, yeah. And I, I'm in the in the thinking of um, I'm more than positive that Couture doesn't just spout this stuff off yep. in the in to the media. Mm -hmm. Like, he's going to go to them in the locker room first. After a game, they're not... the. The media is not in the locker room right away. Mm -hmm. They have to wait, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes or something until the team's done. They kind of talk with each other and, and do their own little meetings and stuff. So guarantee that that happened, that Couture, maybe not even just Couture, the entire team, yeah. there's a bunch of leaders on that team. I'm sure they all talked to him. I mean, we know that Carlson was very upset after the game because you just he's just an emotional player. You yeah. see it on the ice. Um, Couture was, I think, yelling from the bench as well. Um, to get the, off the ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And, and even when he was, when when they scored the goal and they were checking, taking a look at it still, Couture was on the ice and he goes, skates up to LeBanc and I don't know if it was LeBanc and Timo or just LeBanc, but he skates right up to him and you could see him like barking at him and he was like pointing behind him like, basically, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. uh, so he was letting him have it on the bench for sure. So even before they got to the locker rooms, he was Kevin LeBanc and Timo Meyer or one or the other. They were hearing it from the captain already. So there's that, but... That, that's what my point is that it wasn't the first time they heard it was right. through the media, which I think a lot of people were thinking like, oh wow, he's using the media as a tool to yeah. get to the players. That's not quite what it was. Couture is just right. going to speak his mind. That's probably why a lot of the media love him because he gives good quotes. I mean, Kevin Kirsch <laughs> talked about it last year that he's probably his favorite interview because he doesn't sugarcoat anything. And so this this is the versus section where we talk about the way Pavelski handled things. If Pavelski was captain and he was on the team and that situation happened. I think Pavelski would kind of more or less protect the players in the media. Yeah. He would just say, they're young guys, they're going to learn from it, uh, we already talked about it. Just, he handles it in a different way. Yeah. And I think a lot of other captains do too. And I'm not saying one is right or wrong, 
I, it's just different. And this year is the year of Couture, so it's different. It's going to be different. It's going to feel different. It's going to sound different. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it's better or worse. We'll see how they respond out of it. I think they've done all right. You know, they didn't... Oh, well, yeah. Kevin LeBanc has scored some goals. Yeah. But, again, tonight we talked about tonight's game. He had this kind of semi-defensive blunder. He's just not going to, you know, it's not going to switch just like sure. that. It's going to yeah. take time, and they're still learning. Absolutely. So, and it, and Yeah, and, and I think, um, so what What I was saying, I don't know if there was maybe a little bit misunderstanding there. My whole point was, I, I was actually saying, I hope that this doesn't cause like a rift in, in the locker room or anything. Now, I'm not saying it's going to cause a rift, and I'm not saying that, you know, someone's going to take it that way necessarily. All I was getting at was, um, I, I'm 100% sure that they heard this before the, the Kutcher said it to the media. Again, he said it to him on the bench. They have that meeting before mm -hmm. the media get there. Yes, they all heard it already. My whole point was, with Pavs at the helm, that would have been enough. You tell him right there, hey man, don't ever do that again. I'll smack you. Mm -hmm. Whatever, right? But then Pavs goes to the media and he goes, oh, you know, we got to get pucksing deep. We got to, you know, That's whatever. Right? He sugarcoats cliche, it. Cliche, cliche, cliche. Exactly. Now... <laughs> The but the boys already know they're in trouble with the captain. They already oh, I'm know sure. that, right? The captain, the coach, yeah, yeah, the other alternate captains, the exactly. former captain, every, exactly. Every so the, the boys already know that they're yeah. in trouble. They know that they got to step their game up. They know all that stuff. So for for me, seeing how the like, Pavs and most other captains in the NHL, they protect their player from the media, but mm -hmm. behind closed doors, they're telling a different story, right? And the guys are listening to what's going on in the other story, the behind closed they doors. They are adults right? too. These aren't children they're no not, absolutely like people were like oh don't be too mean don't you know like, yeah no no it's not about being mean but it's right. it's and it, what i'm saying protecting it's more about you know now you're going to have somebody writing about you in, in an article saying that you know speculating on on anything and everything else because now you're in the spotlight i think sometimes what the cap captain will do is he'll protect them from that spotlight but behind closed doors you know we're looking at you mm -hmm. right so that was my whole thing is i i, I know that he's already heard that and it's not like what he said would cause a rift because what he said was already said behind closed doors. It's that it was said to media. I hope that they don't go, well, why would you say it to them? You already told me. Right. It's kind of like if your boss goes up to you and tells you, hey, you suck at your job and then goes to his boss and everybody else in that company <laughs> and everybody else in that accounting world or whatever it is right. and says, Aaron sucks. No one's going to want to hire you after that, right? So I think yeah. that's kind of where you might go, dude, my boss is kind of a jerk. You know what I mean, right? <laughs> yeah. So that, that's all I'm always getting at with that. Um, I, 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 the words that actually came out of his mouth, I don't think he has a problem with it. It's just the who, right? right. So yeah. that aside, and obviously it doesn't seem to have caused a drift, and I don't think that it necessarily will. I'm just uh, saying I hope that it doesn't. That's all. So moving on from that, are we good? Yeah. What is the next versus? I think it's uh, uh, Pavelski, Pavs. and a lot of people are talking about we should never have signed <laughs> uh, Eric, Eric Carlson, Carlson yeah. to the, his contract, and we should have signed Pavelski because we our scoring woes would not be so bad. However, <laughs> you look at the numbers. Uh -huh. Pavelski, right now, to start the season, he's played 13 games, mm -hmm. and he has two goals and one assist. Yep. Right? And Carlson has played 11 games and has a goal and seven, seven assists. assists. Yeah. So eight points versus... Three points. Now, to Pavelski's credit, last year he had a semi-career year. He had a, a really good 38 goals. Mm -hmm. He ended the season 38 goals. It, going into last year's 13 games, he had five goals and zero assists. So right. he started off slow and then Picked picked it up, up and, and kept going. Now, Carlson, I didn't look at his numbers. I forgot to look at the first he, 13 he games. St he started off slow and then he picked up maybe right around the time that Carlson started catching fire. Right. Just saying. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, Carson had that month in December <laughs> yeah. where he had 25 points in 14 games, if yeah. I remember correctly, off the top of my head. Yep. Um, so, I... <laughs> Here, let's I, say this too, by the way. Pavs, so we just got done talking about five-on-five -five play and how five-on-five -five play was not so great. Those five goals, I was like, well, probably four or five or all five were on the power play because it's Pavelski, right? Mm -hmm. uh, turns out, no. One. One was on the power play. The rest of them were all five on five. So people can look at this. Again, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. People can look at this and go, well, see, if we had Pavs, we'd be better a five on five team. And that's yeah. where we suck right now. Four more goals on five on five. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's not going to be <laughs> That's going to win games? Probably not. Maybe anyway, one game. Go ahead. Proceed. Uh, <laughs> well, a better way to think about it is where are they going to be in five years from now? Mm -hmm. Is Pavelski going to be playing in the league? No. No, I don't think Carlson? so. Carlson? 
Yeah. And he's probably, he'll be 33 years old. Mm -hmm. For a defenseman, that's not that old. Right. Uh, he's a very good skater, so he's still going to be, I think, a top defenseman. Maybe not the top defenseman, but top five, I think, sure. in the league. So I think uh, it's money well spent still on the Sharks because Carlson's on the ice 25-plus minutes. Pavelski's getting about 18 minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's another, what, seven more minutes on the ice of having your best player on the ice. Yeah. Um, Carlson makes everyone else around him better. Um, and I'm talking, obviously, about offense, not defense here but right <laughs> <laughs> uh, offensively he helps out more than just his defensive pairing it's right. whatever line is out there with him uh forward lines and there's four different forward lines so. yeah so and, yeah, and again I, we we saw that tonight where, where he mm -hmm. cruises in it doesn't show up on the score sheet but he makes a little four foot pass to couture gets it over to burns not Kane just it's not goal. just the pass it's the skating and yeah, possessing exactly more than the pass it's the getting in across the line we've seen a few times even this season with mm -hmm. the power play where they just can't seem to get across that blue line sometimes and then here goes Carlson from you know his net <laughs> it's just like it's just so easy What's literally <laughs> literally coasting wide legged right through the neutral zone yeah. and he, but he's flying you know and it's he just carries the puck across the blue line no problem they back in for him I don't know so um I, I don't know, man. I, I just don't see it. I, I, I understand people looking at him going, well, he's a liability defensively. Well, you know what? If you shore up the system around and, and, and you, you get him playing you know, a little bit more defensively when he's in his end, then those higher risk plays of getting up and out, they, they're not so bad, right? But the mentality needs to be you know, take care of your own end. And if he can do that, I think we're in pretty good shape. Yep. But comparing him again to, to Pavs and which one makes more sense for the team, again, I'm with you. Um, I think you do want to have your best player on the ice for as, as much as you can. And he's out there just about half the game. He helps, you know, was it uh, four times three, 12 guys on, on the, the, the ice there. I had to do math quick real quick. Math there, <laughs> Bang. Um, yeah, no, I had to do uh, some quick math. But yeah, it's, you know, you're helping all the forward lines out. You're yeah. not just helping a defensive partner. So, um, you know, all those guys are going to get the the benefits of playing with Eric Carlson. Like you said, there was a stretch where he had 25 points in 14 games. Mm -hmm. He only gets those points because he's distributing the puck to everybody. So, um, he, you know, another another good reason for me why Eric Carlson still belongs in this team. I know some people don't really uh, and like the contract, but I think even, like you said, five years from now, that contract is not going to look nearly as bad. There's going to be some $13, $14 million players that are out there. and. Right. That won't look, you know, a, a, as steep of a contract, if you will. So, right. That's my take on that one. Uh, right. The last versus. Uh, we have Martin Jones versus Oof. Aaron Dell. Oof. So, wow, we've never had talked this topic ever, before. ever. This is like the first time. I've never seen anyone comment about how <laughs> Martin Jones should not be the starter and Aaron Dell should be ever. Uh, obviously, that got fueled yes. when Montreal. Martin, yeah, when uh, Aaron Dell was a net and the Sharks beat Montreal on this entire road trip. It's the only regulation win. Mm -hmm. So, of course, people are saying Aaron Dell's the better goalie. He should start more. And sure enough, he started against Ottawa. Uh, was it two games later? So uh, Martin Jones got the the game against Toronto, mm -hmm. which was the back-to-back. -back. And then they, they threw Aaron Dell back out there for Ottawa. Yeah. Aaron Dell did not look sharp. And this is what... I was, we were joking, obviously, earlier. Last year we had a, uh, episode 25, was it, um, where we broke down the stats between Aaron, jo uh, Aaron Jones, Martin Aaron. Jones and Aaron Tell. You remember the, the episode number? Yeah, because we had talked about it this week. Wow. You remember? I don't remember that. Mm, all right. That's amazing. Go check out episode 25 as well while you're here. Anyway, right. go ahead. Uh, Aaron Dell is not a starting goaltender. Right. He's good for some spot starts, and the Sharks need him to play more. Pete DeBoer has said as much. Um, and... Also, I think last week they were talking about it on the on the broadcast. Uh, Martin Jones plays better when his backup, whether it's Aaron Dell or someone mm -hmm. else, is playing well. When I think it was James Reimer was pushing for time, he was playing well, and Martin Jones's numbers went up as well. It's competition is healthy, and we need Aaron Dell to play better so that Martin Jones starts to play better. But um, we can see, you know, after today's game, I don't think I'd want Aaron Dell to start in net consistently. Yeah. No, I think, I, I think Martin Jones looks and plays better this year than he has last year. I think he's looked pretty good, yeah. to be honest with you. He's made some really big saves. Like, we don't come up on the uh, the winning end of it all the time. Uh, some of that has to be, you know, put on the defense. Some of that has to be put on the offense. When you're only scoring one goal, you're probably not winning that game. 
Um, but, you know, I, again, he's made some really big saves. And I, I'm probably going to tweet out more often now when I see uh, him make a nice save because <laughs> people don't, they, they only talk about when it doesn't go right. his way. They never talk about like the five, six, seven big saves a game that you see him make. So, um, you know, it's just kind of like a, I'm, I'm not a huge, I'm like Jones fan, say, but. Let's throw this disclaimer out there. We yeah. don't think Martin Jones is an all-star goalie. No, no. He's, he's a, should be right around above the league average for yeah. save percentage of goals against average. We think he's right around there. Maybe top 10 to 15 see, goalie. See, and I don't even want to use numbers like that. I just, yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at Martin Jones himself and just looking at the play that goes on around him and going, eh, if we played a little bit tighter, I think we'd be okay. Case in point, we just talked about the PK. Like, we're phenomenal in PK, mm -hmm. right? So if the PK, or if our goaltender was that bad, then our PK would probably be suffering too, right? It'd the probably, puck's still getting to the net. So. It'd probably be worse, yeah. actually. Yeah. Like, well, obviously it'd be worse because it's number one in the league, but I right. mean, it would. we would probably be towards the bottom if we had absolutely terrible goaltending. Right. So, so uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just not really buying that, you know, Aaron Dell could step in and, and be the starter here. We've seen this. There was that episode where we looked at, you know, when Martin Jones went down and Dell came in and he had a good game and then he had a not so great game and then he was like, please get Martin Jones back on the net. Yeah. So, um, and someone, I think someone commented on Twitter when I brought that up, they said, uh, well, that was then, this is now. It's like, <laughs> So wh where are the 60 games you're referring to then that, that this is now a portion? Because I haven't seen that yet. So uh, obviously being very sarcastic. But um, <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things where it's like, look, you know, I, I understand he has a great game, but that's what you need out of your backup once in a while. You need your backup to come in mm -hmm. and have a good game. You need to have confidence in your backup. Yeah. That they can give the starter a night off right. here and there, and your team isn't going to be at the bottom. Kind of mm -hmm. like I feel like that's how Vegas is. There, oh yeah. You don't have flurry in that. You're not going to win that game. Absolutely, most likely. So, um, it's good to have a confidence boosting right. kind of uh, backup. See, and in Vegas's case, uh, if they could outscore their opponents, not obviously any team that outscores their opponent, but th that's the way they would win that game. Right. They wouldn't win that game by shutting it down with their backup in. They win that game by just going berserk on offense. Yeah. Right. So, um, different. Uh, team different situation but uh, again the point being I uh, no, Dell's not our starter and that's okay it doesn't mean he sucks it just means he's good for his role and his roles as a backup right yeah cool all right so we are done with that now are we jumping into looking ahead let's look we? ahead let's look ahead we got three games correct correct first game is in Boston this is Tuesday yep so uh, this ends the road trip. Yes, that it does. On. Was it six the games? Very long road trip. Yeah, yeah. So this will be their fifth game in eight nights, yeah. if I it's recall. Brutal, 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 brutal. So uh, the Boston Bruins, if I recall, eight wins, one loss, two overtime losses. Yep. And they are a team that was in the Stanley Cup Finals that pretty much returned most of that team. They are so a practically the same. They are a heavy team. Yeah. They like to hit. And they're pretty good in terms of putting the puck in the net, and Tuukka Rask isn't too bad himself. Right. So um, this is a team that you talked about Toronto being a scheduled loss uh, for the last week. To me, this game feels like a scheduled loss almost, <laughs> right? And I know you're going to rebut that in just a second sure. here. But uh, you look at the Sharks, again, five games in eight nights, and uh, you're going up against a team that just played – um, tonight, I believe they won seven to four over the Rangers. They've got a day break. They have to travel from New York, oh. <laughs> uh, so they have a day break, and then they come in and they play a very tired uh, San Jose Sharks team who's just gone on this gigantic road trip, uh, traveling all over the place. L no legs left when they played against Ottawa, and then they have to go in and play against a team like Boston. So, uh, and they're playing in their house too. So this is going to be a really rough game. I don't want to call it a scheduled loss, but it sure feels like it. Yeah, but it is also Boston's third third game in four nights because they played Saturday, Sunday. So they're equally going to be as tired. We're probably going to see some sluggish slow hockey, especially <laughs> in the third period. Hope for uh, no overtime for this game because it will just be awful. Um, <laughs> not that I'm just joking. I'm yeah, yeah. Just joking. But uh, you're going to see some tired legs out there on both sides. So I, I hate to use that excuse. I also feel like the Sharks are going to – kind of give it their all a little mm -hmm. bit because they have a break until Friday and they get to come home and this is the last game so it's their last ditch effort to right. kind of close out and hopefully salvage some points on the road trip. Yeah. Um, so what was it, six games on the road trip in total? 
think so, okay. yeah. So possible of 12 points. Mm -hmm. If they can get another two points added to that, I think you'd end on a good note for ending the road trip. Yeah. That was awful and a very long one. But I don't know <laughs> if this is the longest one they're going to have for the season or not, but Probably it seemed not. pretty long. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. So then going from the Boston game on Friday, they're coming home to play against Winnipeg. Yes. Um, Winnipeg is an interesting team. This was a team last year that was pegged to go deep into the playoffs, mm -hmm. conference finals, maybe even the finals. Um, we talked about them earlier, how they just lost a bunch of their defensemen. So imagine the Sharks losing their top four defensemen and yeah. going, good luck. Yep. Right? So here's a team that is six and six going into at least to Monday. Um, so it might be a little bit different by the time we play them on Friday. But I feel like this should be a win. This this Winnipeg is beatable. Obviously, they're a perfect six and six. Exactly, a, a nice round five hundred. Yes. right. So far, so yeah. But you're right. I mean, no, most notably, Dustin Bufflin not there on the blue line, right? So, uh, but again, like you said, you, their their top four yeah. defensemen were pulled out. That right there, I know that the Sharks aren't as deep offensively as they were last season, but uh, against a team that is so depleted defensively. This is an opportunity, a really big opportunity for you to get everything back on the right foot. You're at home. You're playing a team that's hurting deep on, on, in terms of talent on the blue line. And I think you need to exploit that as best you can. If you want to clamp down a little bit defensively, this is also the place to do it uh, against this team. They have some pretty good guns. They do. Right? So if you can shut them down and get the puck up the ice, you're probably going to do a pretty decent job against their blue liners. So... Uh, that's the idea. I'm kind of glad that Dustin Bufflin is not playing because I feel like he always gives the Sharks problems ever <laughs> he since gives... he's been in the league with Chicago. So um, uh, the Sharks should take advantage because I, I, I still have a feeling he's going to come back at yeah. some point this season. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he'll come back. Um, Sneaky fantasy pick, maybe? <sighs> we'll get to that. Nah. No? All right. Yeah. Uh, home game against Vancouver. Uh, that's the following night. So back another back-to-back. Back back. At least they don't have to travel this time. Yeah. So uh, Vancouver is, they're up there. They're well, they're above the Sharks right now in the standings. But I feel like we're going to do, I'm going to do a segment next week on yeah. pretenders. So I think um, this is a pretender in a way, but okay. an up-and-coming one. They're not as bad as they were last year. Uh, they do have Quinn Hughes mm -hmm. um, on the blue line. And he's been running the power play, I believe. Yeah. And he's been doing pretty well. Uh, he's outscoring his brother over <laughs> in uh, New Jersey. So that's kind of funny. I'm sure they have a little rivalry going. And they just played each other last yeah. week, too. Um, but uh, anyway, I think Vancouver is a beatable team. Uh, their goaltending is actually remarkably good. Uh, Jacob Markstrom is a guy who's been bouncing around. A guy who had very high potential. Yeah. Couldn't quite reach it. Bounced around a couple teams. I think he was in Florida for a he while. Was. And uh, now he's kind of hitting that potential where you're like, wow, he's he is a good goalie. Late bloomer. Yeah, late bloomer. And then they have uh, Thatcher Demko is another guy who's their backup. Uh, and he's an up-and-coming yeah. high prospect goalie who yeah. looks like the real deal. Um, uh, was Markstrom was out last week for a couple games, and, and Demko took over for a couple games, and he looked pretty good. Nice. So Vancouver is a team that is young, up-and-coming, kind of like Buffalo where they were a year or two ago. I think that's where Vancouver's at. Okay. So I think a team that kind of starts off a little hot, like they did last year, and then they're going to kind of come down a little bit. Mm. Um, but they're not going to come down as hard as they did last year. Not that I'm trying to not get not into too much that I'm going to get enough. into next week, but yeah. a good team. So part of the reason why the Sharks are not dominating is the rest of the league, the parity of the league. Mm -hmm. like, as a whole, parity in the NHL is there. So even the worst team, the Ottawa Senators, are going to win against other teams, right? Right. The LA Kings are not going to go winless, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But they are not going to make playoffs. So I think this is going to work Vancouver. They're going to be close to a bubble team, but just short. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. And let's be fair, by the way, in the Ottawa game, Craig Anderson did play a pretty good game today. He is a good goalie. He stepped up. He And I think he, I, I haven't, you know, you can fact check me on this. I'm pretty sure he's seen the most rubber out of any goalie in the last five years being on that Ottawa team. Really? Oh, yeah, they maybe. give up a lot of shots. He's usually making 30-plus saves a night. Yeah. So he is a beast. What did they say, 17, 18 years, uh, seasons in the NHL? Or He's pro been around Maybe a 16 long and time. then 18 professionally or something like that. But I, I, I want to say he started on Colorado. Yeah. He was on the Avalanche for a while. Yeah, you might be right on that one. Yeah. yeah. And then bounce around. But Anyway, yeah. Um, so on that week, you were saying you'd love to see, you'd be happy with five out of eight points. We ended up with three out of eight. What are you looking for out of this week? This week, I would be heavily disappointed if we didn't get at least four points. Ooh. 
Okay. I think those two home games are definite wins. I think they're going to pull out a win in Boston to salvage a trip. I wow. think we're going to get six points this week. Wow. Really? And then people will kind of calm down. Be like, all right, the Sharks aren't that bad. I can imagine the comments. Just the, the keyboard warriors right now just, you're so wrong. <laughs> Probably. You don't think so? Oh, I'm sure. That okay. All right. Yeah. All right. But do I think I'm wrong? No. I no? Think, I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to beat Boston. I think they're going to come home and beat Winnipeg and then beat Vancouver. And you know what's great? In in episode 62's pre-shoot the live, which by the way, if you're not subscribed, please do hit that button and ring 61, the bell. 61, you mean? In 62. Oh, next week. Next week. Yeah. Uh, hit hit the bell because uh, we go live before our shows and we love chatting with you guys. So when you do do that, <laughs> uh, show up, chat with us, and you can tell Aaron, wow, you were right. We got six points this week. That's amazing. <laughs> How does he do it? It's the head. Uh, anyway, I think uh, that's all we're talking about with the... Uh, we get ahead? Yep. We're good there? Okay, good. so six out of six points. You heard it here first. Um, EASHL now. All right, cool. So uh, we've got some screenshots for you guys uh, for the EASHL teams. We got our, uh, we'll start off with the Xbox, right? Sure. Uh, Patrick Cabral, yeah. uh, he's leading this one up for us. So if you guys are interested in joining either of these teams, go ahead and search TFF as the abbreviation, and you will find us. Uh, probably set the region to all, I believe, is what we said last time. Mm. And uh, yeah, it should be open, so just go ahead and uh, request to join, and it'll let you right in. But there's the stats. Um, not looking too bad, starting to get a little bit more activity going there. Uh, I'm sure we could pick it up a little bit more. The folks that are joined up in there and uh, other ones who do join in, if you have any friends, bring them in there. We're just looking for the activity uh, and get your name up on this uh, the screenshot next there time you around. Go. There you go. Yeah. PS4 coming up for you right now. Uh, take a look at that there. Uh, who's at the top? Yes, it's me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just going to go ahead and say it. Uh, but no, it's uh, we're having a great time. I, I don't know. How, you, you've been on a few times. But I've been jumping on there with guys yeah. right, uh, lately, and we've just been having a blast. Uh, whether we're winning or losing, we're we're uh, we're having a good time. It's fun. And, uh, it's, it's a good, it has been. It's a good group of people. It, it, it definitely is. That's yeah. the thing. You know, we've always heard with with this show, we've had uh, you know, we've built a great community. Uh, really, you guys are, are the community. You've built it yourself. But uh, we're just happy to be the forum uh, for you guys to kind of jump in. But the uh, the EASHL's team, it actually is a really nice community. The guys mm -hmm. that are on there, they're they're friendly. Uh, they don't really care if you suck or not. And if if you need help with something, <laughs> they'll tell you. Um, I, I, I know they don't care if you suck or not because I'm playing, right. uh, and they haven't yelled at me yet, so um, <laughs> it's, it's all good. So uh, yeah, there's there's the, uh, the the rest of that screenshot there for you, and uh, I guess here we have a little bit of a, a little clip. So um, nobody's really been sending clips, so I just kind of been doing them myself. Um, I've got a couple to choose from. I don't know which one I'm going to put up yet, so I'm just going to say here's the clip, and then pretend <laughs> like I know which one it was when we return. Check out the clip. The backhand, big stop by the keeper. After the first stop, he's in good position to make a second. Centered out in front, stop by the goaltender. Quick pass to Zidlicki. Scores! Good night! They needed overtime, but they come up big in the extra frame. Always an unbelievable feeling to score an overtime goal. You score and you feel that you've just ended it. It's so, so cool to do. For Ray Ferraro, I'm James Sabalski. We'll see you next time we drop the puck. How amazing was that? What? I'm not sure. We're going to figure out which one we're talking about <laughs> when the video is released. Anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, again, if you guys have any clips you want to send them in, uh, please go ahead and do that. I know we've got some guys that are gamers uh, who have their own gaming channels who watch. Uh, kick a clip our way, and maybe we can shout you out as well, and then you can get some more followers that way too. Who knows? Uh, in any case, that is all for the EASHL. If you do want to join, please, again, uh, TFF in the abbreviation, and it should be open to public. Go. Uh, Fantasy Leagues, here's the update. Here's the standings for League One. I am in third place now uh, behind uh, a couple teams here. but Fall from grace. Uh, I'm going to call you Humpty Dumpty. You got the league, head for it. This league's a little closer <laughs> okay. uh, in, in terms of the standings where everyone else is at. Mm -hmm. um, this is also the league where I went heavy on goalies, if you remember, yeah, back yeah. at the draft. So I kind of took goalies on the earlier side. Um, and then we'll take a look over at League Two now, and I am still at the top, and oh I'm boy. kind of building on that lead, which is an interesting thing because this is the strategy <laughs> where I did not go heavy on goalies. I went a little bit um, 
uh, light's not the right word, but okay. I took the guys a I little took later. The goalies later, yeah, yeah, and focused on offense. So um, two different schools of thought. It's, it'll be interesting to see um, how I end up in the end of the season based on the two different strategies. It also it's a little different because there's you know different people, different yeah. ways that they play, and different teams that are structured. So um, still will be interesting, and I'm glad to be up on top. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. All right. Well, I think that's everything for the show. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to throw in there? Yeah. No. Plug our merchandise. Maybe? Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Why we not? got uh, we have t-shirts and hats and stickers, and uh, you can go check out the store at thefinfactor.com. We'll put the link right down here. Mm-hmm. And uh, anything that you buy helps support the show. So if you'd like to support the show and get something out of it, feel free to visit our store. We're running a promo right now called Patty, and it's for free shipping in all of the U.S. Yeah. Well done. Thanks. Very good. Usually I'm the one doing it. Right. I kicked it over him because I was told during the live that I talk too much. So <laughs> give it to him. I'm going to talk just a little bit more. I want to show off a couple things. Uh, the hurdle on the bench, the, uh, the what do you call it, the bus bench, I guess. Um, so there's that oh, one there. Oh, that's from the TV commercial. It's supposed to have Dylan DeMello in there. Remember from last oh, season? Wah, but wah. they traded him. Yeah, so they traded just, him right after that commercial came out, right? They shoved Hurdle over to the middle of the bench. Oh. And they did that, yeah. And then the uh, Nick DeSimone, um, San Jose Barracuda. He's uh, got a slap shot there, and it's a bomb, we, we found out. I thought it was like a black pineapple at first. <laughs> black pineapple. But you know, it didn't make any sense to me. Why is he shooting a black pineapple? Anyway, it's a bomb. So he's got a bomb from the point, apparently. There you go. Um, that was uh, from the Cuda Kids Club when you sign up, which oh, nice. if you have some young kids and you like going to Barracuda games, this is a no-brainer. They give you the, uh, they give you like a shirt, they give you a bobble, it's like 10 bucks. And like right there, like your 10 bucks is back to you. Yep. So um, really, really cool stuff. Definitely go check them out. And then the last thing, uh, and I got all these, by the way, from uh, looking at the, um, oh gosh, Turn Up and Teal events. So uh, totally awesome. Um, the the clock here, the Timo Time alarm clock, which <laughs> um, I wish I could say it's not annoying. It's ex- it's incredibly annoying. It's it's very loud and uh, it's very repetitive. It's a real clock. And it's yes, it's it's yeah, exactly. It's supposed yeah, to it's get got, you up. It's got real bells. Well, on. those actually don't work. It's it's a um, yeah. Thank you for. That. <laughs> Please stop. <They> work. <laughs> no, but it doesn't. It, when it does it, it's just an electronic anyway. Oh really? Yeah, it's kind of whatever. But it's cool, because it's got Timo on it, and it's Timo time. I think you're doing it wrong. Rock and roll. Anyway, uh, am I doing it wrong? <laughs> it's a real hammer hitting the bells. <laughs> All right, mm-hmm. so I think that is it for episode number 61. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please do remember to uh, subscribe, because when we do go live, we love having the conversations with you guys. So anything else you want to add at the end there? We are good. Okay, so for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.